Hello students, warm welcome to all of you. Today we are going to discuss 7th chapter in our grade 9 CBSC curriculum that is triangles. It is one of the interesting and very important of course basic concept in our plane geometry. In this topic, we are going to learn congruence criteria or congruence properties of triangles and some very important properties of different types of triangles and what are the triangles based on sides as well as based on angles and some applications on this triangles concept, right. So, first of all, what do you mean by a triangle? See, every single day in our mathematics class, more or less definitely we will hear this word triangle all the time, but you should know exactly what do you mean by a triangle. See, if you want to define a triangle, you should know what do you mean by a polygon, right? What do you mean by a polygon? See, there are two types of polygons. What are those two types of polygons? For example, if you have a polygon of this kind, this is one polygon and this is one more polygon that I am going to draw here. This is one more polygon. In these two polygons, have you observed any difference? Any difference? What is the difference between these two polygons? If you identify the difference between these two polygons, in the first polygon, if you observe all the interior angles, this is one interior angle, this is one interior angle, this is one more interior angle, this is one more interior, this is one more interior, this is one more interior angle. Out of all these interior angles, if you observe one of the particular angle, that particular angle is this. For example, this vertex is suppose P. Okay. In this particular angle, if you observe or if you estimate the measurement of this angle, see what is the measurement of this angle? The measurement of this angle is definitely more than 180 degrees. What is that extra part to 180 degrees? This is the extra part to 180 degrees. Did you observe this? So, totally what kind of angle this is? This angle is that angle P is definitely more than 180 degrees. If angle P is more than 180 degrees, angle P is more than 180 degrees. What do you call this kind of angles? Definitely, you can call this as a reflex angle because this angle is more than 180 degrees. So, if in a polygon, if in a polygon, at least one of the angles is more than 180 degrees, means one of the angles, at least one of the angles is a reflex angle, then those kind of polygons are said to be concave polygon. What do you call that? Concave polygon. So, concave polygon is nothing but a polygon in which at least one of the angles is a reflex angle, then it is said to be a concave polygon. But what about this? See here, if you observe each interior angle, this is one interior angle, this is one more interior angle, this is one more interior like that. If you observe every single interior angle of this polygon is always less than 180 degrees. It can be obtuse, it can be acute, it can be right angle, but it is always less than 180 degrees. Then those kind of polygons are said to be convex polygon. What do you call that? Convex polygon. So, these two are two types of polygons. So, basically what do you mean by a polygon? A polygon is a simple closed figure bounded by the line segments. A polygon is defined as a simple closed figure bounded by line segments. So, this is a simple closed figure bounded by the line segments. Also, simple closed figure bounded by the line segment. 
but according to the measurement of the angles we are classifying them into convex polygons as well as concave polygons. But we discuss about only convex polygons in our grade 9. Okay. Let us have a look on this convex polygons and what are different types of convex polygons. Okay. Different types of convex polygons. For example, if a polygon has, if you want to form a polygon of a closed figure, what is the minimum number of sides or minimum number of, number of line segments that you need? So, with the help of two line segments, we cannot form any closed figure. So, we need at least three line segments to form a simple closed figure. So, if you form a simple closed figure bounded by three line segments, then that polygon so obtained is said to be a triangle. Understand? So, a triangle means a simple closed figure bounded by three line segments is said to be a triangle or else simply a polygon with three sides is said to be a triangle. A polygon with three sides is said to be a triangle. Polygon with three sides is said to be a triangle. Then what is that simple closed figure? Simple closed figure would be a triangle. It can be like this. Okay, that is a triangle and a polygon with four sides otherwise four line segments then what do you call that? You can call it as a quadrilateral. What do you call that? A quadrilateral. So, this is one shape of a quadrilateral and a simple closed figure bounded by five line segments then what do you call that? That polygon is said to be a pentagon. So, pentagon means it has how many number of line segments? It has three line segments. Okay? A pentagon has three line segments, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 line segments. So, this is a pentagon and if a polygon consists of six sides, otherwise a simple closed figure bounded by six line segments, then what do you call that? You can call it as a hexagon. Hexagon is nothing but it has totally six line segments. We can call them as six sides, right? So this is one of the examples for what it is. Uh, is called one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a hexagon, and a polygon consists of seven sides. A polygon consists of seven sides is said to be septagon. What do you call that? Septagon, it has how many number of line segments? It has totally seven line segments. So, it has totally seven sides. Got it? And if a polygon consists of eight sides, then what do you call this? Then you can call it as an octagon. Octagon. Okay? If a polygon consists of nine sides, then what do you call that? You can call it as a nonagon. Nonagon, not nanogan, it is nonagon. Okay? A polygon consists of 10 sides, then what do you call that? It is said to be a decagon. And from 11 sides onwards, you can call them as 11 sided polygon or 11 gon, 12 sided polygon or 12 gon, 13 sided polygon or 13 gon, n sided polygon as said to be n gon. Right? So, these are different types of polygons as per the number of sides. right? Now, in our grade 9th class, we are going to discuss exclusively about triangle. right? So, basically, what do you mean by a triangle? Once again, we recall the definition of a triangle. A triangle is a simple closed figure bounded by three line segments. Otherwise, a polygon with three sides is said to be a triangle. Let us try to identify the types of triangles. We already learnt right from the grade 7 onwards. So, can you tell me how many number of or how many types of triangles are there? We should not start with the isosceles triangle, scale in triangle, equilateral triangle, obtuse angle triangle, all these things. But all the triangles are classified into two types. Those two types of triangles are 
triangles are classified into two types. What are those two types of triangles? So, first type of triangle is triangles based on their sides, triangles based on their sides and another type of triangles are triangles based on their angles, triangles based on sides as well as triangles based on angles. What are the triangles based on sides? Let us try to understand this. So, triangles based on sides, there are three types of triangles. What are those three types of triangles? First triangle is scaling triangle and the second triangle is isosceles triangle and third triangle is equilateral triangle, equilateral triangle. So, these three are three triangles based on their sides and then what are the triangles based on their angles? Triangles based on their angles are the first triangle is acute angled triangle, acute angled triangle and what is the next triangle? Next triangle is right angled triangle, right angled triangle and what is the next triangle? Next triangle is obviously obtuse angled triangle, obtuse angled triangle. You already learnt all these things in your grade 7 and grade 8. That is why I am just writing their names. And there is one special triangle which is based on their sides as well as based on their angles. Can you guess what is the triangle? Yes, that triangle is right angled isosceles triangle. What is the triangle? Right angled isosceles triangle. So, these are the triangles classified based on their sides as well as based on their angles, right. Let us have a look, a brief look on what do you mean by all these triangles and what do you mean by all these triangles, okay. So, the first triangle is scaling triangle, second isosceles triangle, third one is equilateral triangle and then acute angle triangle, right angle triangle and then obtuse angle triangle and finally, we have right angled isosceles triangle. So, totally how many triangles are there? These are 3, these are 3, 3 plus 3 equal to 6 plus 1 equal to 7. So, totally there are 7 triangles. If you take any one of the triangle, definitely the triangle should be one of these triangles. So, you should keep that point in mind. Now, let us try to understand one by one briefly because you need to understand about scale in triangle. What do you mean by scale in triangle and when a triangle is said to be a scale in triangle? Like that for every single triangle. Now, I will start with scale in triangle, okay. The very first triangle is scale in triangle. So, when a triangle is said to be a scale in triangle, See, everybody says that scale in triangle is nothing but all the three sides are unequal, then it is said to be scale in triangle, absolutely correct definition. Since you are upgrading, your definition should be upgraded. You should know more about whatever the definition that you have. See here in geometry, the only thing is how effectively you can understand the situation how effectively you can analyze the situation only matters, understand? Right. See, scale in triangle, generally we draw scale in triangle like this, okay. So, first side is not equal to second side, of course, not equal to third side, this is absolutely correct. But see here in this scale in triangle, if you observe any two sides, they are not equal. So, when you are telling all the three sides are not equal in a triangle, then it is said to be scale in triangle, absolutely fine. But I just want to tell that definition in a different way that if no two sides are equal, if no two sides are equal, then the triangle is said to be scale in triangle. If no two sides are equal, you can take any two sides must not be equal. Then the triangle is said to be scale in triangle because you should have to follow 
the technical language which is used by the authors in the books. So, that is why I am just trying to tell you the definition this way. If no two sides are equal in a triangle, then the triangle is said to be scaling triangle. And in scaling triangle, of course, AB not equal to BC not equal to AC. And what about the angles? Obviously, angles also not same, right? So, then the triangle is said to be scaling triangle. And coming to the second triangle, what is the second triangle? Isosceles triangle. What do you call that? Isosceles triangle. So, what do you mean by isosceles triangle? Isosceles triangle means if two sides of a triangle are equal, then the triangle is said to be isosceles. Here the definition is very much powerful. You need to understand the definition clearly. See what is my definition for isosceles triangle? Isosceles triangle means if two sides of a triangle are equal, then the triangle is said to be an isosceles triangle. See when you observe the definition, if two sides of a triangle are equal, I am taking one triangle like this. This is triangle for example, P Q R. As per the definition, I am putting these two are equal. So, you can say that it is isosceles triangle only. Suppose, if I put for P R also this way, what do you mean by that? P Q is equal to Q R is equal to P R. Can you call this triangle as isosceles triangle? Now, definitely you are thinking. You know why? If two sides of a triangle are equal, if you can understand that statement, definitely you will not think to answer this problem. If two sides of a triangle are equal, it does not mean that if two sides of a triangle are only equal. Two sides of a triangle are equal is entirely different from two sides of a triangle are only equal. right? Only equal means it should not be the other side should not be equal to one of these two equal sides. That is the meaning of two equals, two sides are only equal. But if you say two sides of a triangle are equal, if you identify two, any two sides irrespective of the length of the third side, then definitely you can say the triangle is isosceles triangle. But here the definition of isosceles triangle is if two sides of a triangle are equal, then the triangle is said to be isosceles. But you should not say that if two sides of a triangle are only equal. Did you get my point? See, this triangle can be considered as an isosceles triangle because you can identify two sides which are equal. And what about the third side? May be equal, may not be equal to the another sides. Got my point? See, you can find out PQ is equal to PR. If you identify one pair of sides are equal, that is enough to say that the triangle is isosceles triangle. What about the third side? The third side may be equal to them or may not be equal to them. That does not matter. Did you get my point? So, if two sides of a triangle are equal in a triangle, then the triangle is said to be isosceles triangle. Did you get my point? Right. So, you should not say that if two sides of a triangle are only equal, then it is said to be isosceles triangle. That is absolutely a wrong definition. If two sides of a triangle are equal, then it is said to be an isosceles triangle. And coming to, let us discuss about the properties of isosceles triangle little later. And coming to the third one, what is the third triangle? Third triangle is equilateral triangle. Third triangle is equilateral triangle. What do you mean by equilateral triangle? Equilateral triangle is nothing but everybody knows that equilateral triangle means if all the three sides of a triangle are equal, then it is said to be equilateral triangle as absolutely fine. So, all the three sides of a triangle are equal. So, this side equal to this side equal to this side. Absolutely fine. If all the three sides of a triangle are equal, then it is said to be equilateral triangle. Now, my point here is, sir, just now we explained about isosceles triangle that if two sides of a triangle are equal, then it is said to be isosceles triangle. Can we call this equilateral triangle as also an isosceles triangle? Absolutely. Because here in triangle PQR, you can find out two sides are equal. Of course, third side is also equal. But what our idea is to identify a pair of sides are equal. 
So, here two sides are equal. So, absolutely this triangle is an isosceles triangle. Basically, this triangle is equal triangle, but since you have two equal sides that are identified, that is why you can say that this triangle is isosceles triangle also. It means every equilateral triangle is isosceles. Is every isosceles triangle equilateral? Need not be. Because if I take one isosceles triangle like this, this is 3 centimeters, this is 3 centimeters, this is some 5 centimeters. So, can we call this triangle is equal triangle? Absolutely not. Because here these two sides are equal and this side is unequal. This is only isosceles but not equilateral triangle. So, here we can conclude one thing that every equilateral triangle is isosceles but every isosceles triangle need not be equilateral. You should not use the word not in our mathematical language because sometimes it is true, sometimes it is false. So, that is why every equilateral triangle is isosceles, but every isosceles triangle need not be equilateral triangle. So, this is about triangles based on sides and their definitions. Hope you understand. Thank you.